The other thing I, I guess I would add to that is, uh, particularly on the, the infill scale, I saw something um, mentioned in, in one of the articles on this, the idea of making that process simple. Um, because sometimes subdivision ordinances in cities are contemplating subdivision being done by major developers and attach heavy impact fees. Um, you know, there's an involved procedure, sometimes involving public hearings, which really shouldn't be applicable, say, a single homeowner who's splitting, splitting their lot or something like that. So I, I think that's another area for bringing down costs and bring down the cost of, of land is addressing those uh, procedural impediments to the small lot subdivision. Okay, thank you. Well, it also sure. can with walking to places. Mm -hmm. um, so one of the things I'm hoping that we can do is to create situations mm -hmm. where we can have a little corner shop like once upon a time was like normal. And so people can walk to a little corner shop and get stuff. And so we have multiple little business centers rather than concentrate only in one place. Um, yeah. yeah. Neighborhoods. Yeah. Yeah, little neighborhoods. Looking at the uh, just virtually touring Athens, I mean, I, I think probably one of the benefits of having the college population there is that you have a, a beautiful, active, vibrant downtown that I'm sure there's a lot of demand to live near uh, particularly if you can live in walking distance. Uh, Only uh, for students. Right. <laughs> Only for students. It's a student oriented. Okay. Opportunity. Yeah, unfortunately. It's not mixed like an Oxford would be, Oxford, Mississippi. I mean, they've given it all up. Yeah. Yeah. The business owners, we've fought, tried to fight that battle and uh, <laughs> we've lost as townies. Okay. I mean, there's some restaurants that are nice, but really it is pretty predominantly for students, which mm -hmm. is unfortunate. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Well, I saw that, well, also, I uh, saw so at least one of the elementary schools is located uh, in the midst of the downtown, which looks uh, easily walkable for a lot of students. So there's, there should be a lot of demand for living in that area. And it may be student oriented, but I'm sure there are some amenities there which are benefit to the, the community at large. And, you know, and simply having an active downtown, I, I would say that's much better than having a you know, main street with boarded up shops and no activity at all. Yeah. Um, that's okay. a that's a benefit. That's a benefit to everybody. Um, so there is probably, uh, you know, strong existing demand to live in that area, but not the uh, with, with the zoning being what it is. Uh, that may not be possible unless somebody obtains a, a rezoning. So a lot of these changes uh, that I mentioned in Burlington and Spokane are about making these things as of right, not dramatic changes to the zoning, not um, allowing vastly larger buildings, which probably wouldn't be economical anyways, but uh, allowing people to do, the people who are living there right now to do um, a lot more that they want with their own properties in terms of infill, in terms of splitting up their lot, in terms of you know, adding an accessory dwelling unit in terms of adding a rental unit within their own house, uh, just many other options, all of which still fall under the category of residential use. So like you mentioned um, the idea of actual, uh, actually expanding the, the range of uses, which is a common practice uh, in many other countries, right? In residential zones, you allow small commercial uses. Mm -hmm. like in Japan, it doesn't matter what zone you live in, you can be on the quietest residential street and you still have the right to open up let's say a, a small coffee shop with 10 seats or so 10 seats or less something like that um that is a common common practice elsewhere almost unheard of in the united states when people try to even propose you know uh corner shop ordinances those tend to be very controversial i think because people feel uh fear the traffic that will be generated by those um but yes traditionally that was that was commonplace i think there's some misconceptions about how that would result what would result if you actually uh did that because you know businesses naturally want to locate where there is already high traffic and they are already visible they don't want to be tucked away on some little street so um that's an interesting idea but it's been it's not one that i've seen um in some of these reform packages it's it's an idea that's uh 
okay. hasn't gotten off the ground as much. It's coming up. Okay. Are there some, I mean, you've mentioned some cities and whatnot larger than ours, mm -hmm. but um, you know, we are in a rural area. We're about an hour and a half from Columbus. So driving and there's Denny, well, there's a bus, I guess, but there's a go bus, but other than that, you know, we're, we're out here. <laughs> so um, we don't have some of the opportunities that a larger city does, but, and, but we have many of the same kinds of pushbacks and, and concerns from certain segments of the population for any kinds of change, let alone something re relatively dramatic. So part of our concern, and I was hoping maybe you could give us some guidance on this, is how do we gradually make some changes and um, avoid that, that aren't too controversial, but, or how do we manage the controversy? Or how do we sort of, I don't wanna say sneak in, that's not true, <laughs> but just sort of have some things that aren't that controversial and then see how that goes and then try to do some something else. I don't know, like for example, um, I lived on East State Street, you know, one of our big streets, and many of my neighbors had apartments above their garage that they'd had for decades. I mean, that was just part of how, but then they banned all that apparently, or they won't allow it. So how do we sort of bring well, that back? That didn't happen. It's well, not allowable by zoning currently to yeah. have an extra dwelling unit. So they're existing non-conforming uses. Exactly. Yeah. The my grandfather did. Yeah. Oh, the grandfather. Exactly. It's the grandfather yeah. that went away. So, I mean, I think yeah. I would like to see that return in part because we have so much housing, ex how the housing is so expensive. It provides more housing and provides people who have a house to allow some extra income. Mm -hmm. And right. I think that's kind of helpful. The comprehensive plan also supports the ADUs being allowable in our R1 zone and up. So yeah, that is an opportunity. I think this commission can get behind and support. I was gonna mention that. <laughs> yeah. Thank you for bringing that up. And that is on the, uh, as far as like seniors, mm -hmm. I know that um, that could be a solution for people who might wanna have like older relatives live with them or age in place. the separate yeah. place rather mm -hmm. than just having someone live bedroom exactly and that yeah that's a big yeah. thing for people with disabilities Correct. that become disabled or same or yeah. people who are, are seniors yeah you know how do they stay in their house after a certain point and they you know struggle to be to take mm -hmm. care of that much space so yeah aging in place is a big part of this yeah yeah i guess uh, maybe three things to to uh, say on that point so i think it's um you know number number one is that yes um you know, many of these uses already do exist, having been grandfathered in. I, I don't know how old uh, zoning is in uh, in Athens, but I'm presuming a lot of the city was built up before there ever was a zoning code. And you probably have many buildings standing today which are accepted as part of the landscape and natural, which are no longer conforming with the code. So to some extent, uh, one way of talking about it is to say, well, we're not, um, we're not changing the city, we're simply re-legalizing what's already there um it's like a lot of what's already there we've we've made our city illegal in some respects even though you know we like the city we all um we all live here and enjoy it but for whatever reason our our zoning code doesn't match what's actually on the ground so right we're this is a common sense thing we're, we're um, making your house legal again the other thing is in terms of uh when I mentioned these missing middle changes and minimum lot size changes and ADUs, these are really not revolutionary changes. The other cities, uh, the cities that I just mentioned, their reforms are so recent, it's hard to say, you know, what sort of response there's going to be uh, market-wise. But, uh, for example, Minneapolis, a much bigger city, which passed the missing middle reform, uh, didn't see a amount of, of redevelopment. There were a bunch of different reasons for that, but you know, these are these are modest changes and the uh, development you would see in response, I think most likely by all other accounts would be gradual over a period of years. It wouldn't be some dramatic overnight change. That's simply not the way it, it works. And um, no, it's, 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 a, it's a small city. Um, you know, uh, it, it's not likely to see an overwhelming 
um, you know, burst of demand unless it's, uh, you know, there's a, there's a, um, you know, the, the student rental market that, that you mentioned. Uh, yeah, and the third thing is, yes, it's also about simply returning rights to the property owner. These are not things that are uh, catering to big developers for better or worse. Uh, it's about uh, allowing more sort of interesting piece that's perhaps outside this conversation is that um, we're seeing, or I've heard from realtors, we're seeing an influx of people who think this is where you buy property based on climate change. And oh, so okay. we are expanding here for that reason. And people coming from California and high, you know, Chicago. cost place Chicago. to come here uh, for that reason. So yeah, we could we need to get a handle on our zoning now before we get even more people trying to move in here. I'm just gonna make one other point because I was also on the Board of Zoning Appeals for a while too. One of the concerns I think that, you know, it, it's how you 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 rewrite the zoning currently. There was such a slap down on what what happened is a lot of single family homes turned into rentals yep. in the 80s and the 90s. I would say that's probably slowed down, but I know on my street, which I we have terms for where we live, closed in neighborhood, meaning it's pretty rental, pretty owner occupied, you know, it's like half and half. Anyways, two very beautiful older homes are gonna go up for sale. It always used to be, oh, that home is too nice. That can't become a rental. But that doesn't always hold true. And so when we say rental in Athens, Ohio, it's not, I don't know, this has changed a little. There is the um, the bed and breakfast model or the you know Airbnb model that's also happened, but it's usually more of a student rental model. So there's a lot of concern whenever that happens. And that's very historical. You know, these homes have had the same people in them for 30, 40 years, right? So there's a lot of concern about, okay, what's going to happen with those particular type of properties because they're just two or three or four houses down. It's totally student rental. So th that's always a concern. And I'm saying particular to this Athens community. So even if you think that, and I've been to places like West Lafayette, where Purdue is and places like that, you're in a very suburban university estates kind of neighborhood and there's a student rental next door. I mean, that just looks like a normal person's house, right? So we have some weird issues here in terms of how housing turns over, what happens. It's, it's just, we're so unique um, in, in that respect, I think personally, not that it hasn't happened other places. It's just, it's, it's very strange. And so it's, it's, as a new city planner here who's come into town, these are historical issues that as you're looking at the zoning, why maybe people have begrudged wanting to change or do because they've experienced some of that, you know, and then whatever. I don't know if anybody's losing revenue on real estate right now, but, you know, in the old days, that was a concern, right? If this happens, then my property values are going to go down, you know, all of that. I don't know if it exists anymore because of the cost, but anyway, sorry, that's a tangent, but I think it's a historical perspective for Athens, Ohio. Yeah, I yeah. think it's- I, I appreciate that. Um, well, I was just gonna add that that is, that's a concern for many college towns and has resulted in um, many such towns and ordinances attempting to restrict student um, student rentals you know, occupancy limits, things like this, excluding people right. living in homes unless they're um, blood relations or marital relations, things like this. A, a very common statute, which was upheld by uh, the U.S. Supreme Court back in, in the 70s, uh, but which there are now new challenges to, uh, constitutional challenges to say, you know, you can exclude people based on um, not the number of people, but on their relationship with each other, right? It's, it's questionable. Yeah. And it doesn't even necessarily have the desired effect. Sometimes it can even, you know, make it worse by spreading out the renters, spreading out the renters even further, right? Um, right. I mean, you know, right. with college students, they probably want to live close to campus. They'd rather not live far away. 
um, they're encountering limited options, which is, is driving this out. So I think that's another thing to uh, to consider. Um, you know, they they would probably love to have an apartment of their their own if they could, uh, rather than sharing an older house with housemates and dealing with all those upkeep issues. Mm -hmm. So um, th that that would just be the note of caution I would sound there is that you know that's been the typical reaction um, in a lot of other other cities is to pass these occupancy limits, which is a uh, sort of a clumsy tool to deal with it, and constitutionally I think may um, you know be imperiled because uh, it's so we have there's so many things to talk about and we we have to respect your time so if you could give us three takeaways from where we go now and whether you would be willing to meet with us again on some of these because i don't know exactly what your arrangements are and how you function um so if you could give us some guidance where where should we go to make some things happen what are what are the best three first steps and then that's the first thing. And then second thing is, would you be willing to talk with us again sometime in the future? I would be delighted to talk more and honestly, um, you know, learn a little bit more about what specific uh, plans you have in mind. The the one thing that I wasn't uh, that I, I guess I didn't get to to ask about was some of the infrastructure issues and the the planning uh, of the the city relative to the the county. So I'd love to have an opportunity to. To get yeah, you know, if we uh, have an opportunity to chat again to discuss that um, a little bit because I think that's an important piece of the the planning oh, picture yeah. as well. Thank you for asking those questions. Yeah, we have a lot of aging infrastructure and a lot of road work happening right now because of new sewers and new fiber optic stuff and all kinds of things happening, which is great. I mean, we've got, the city's doing a lot of good stuff, um, but you know, I'm sure there'll be more. Um, and uh, our planner is here. I'm sure she would be happy to fill you in on more. Uh, yeah, I would love to. I'd love to have a further discussion on that because this is. And uh, our county is a mess. The what? <laughs> our city is uh, much more advanced than our county. Our county is like the Wild West. Mm -hmm. I was just going to say that. Okay. It's completely <laughs> crazy. I mean, it's it's scandalous how bad it is. So. I'll say our regional planning commission last week. At that meeting, they created a subcommittee to talk specifically and review subdivision regulations in the county. So they acknowledge that wow. it needs updating, and they're working on that. I think we only go three miles out. How yeah. how far three out miles. can we go? Three miles? We have three mile review, but it's still yeah good. yeah. Mm -hmm. Right, because that that's that's another that, that was what I another thing I was going to say is I, I noticed that there were some uh, developments being built either on the edge of the city or just outside. <laughs> um that well being higher density were not really tied into the uh, the grid of the city at all and looked very car dependent so uh i was just wondering how that um maybe as as, as something else is just sort of a parting word to think about uh, that in terms of county versus mm -hmm. city planning in terms of growth and where that growth is going um because if the city doesn't allow it then it, you know the county just traditionally signs off on anything no matter uh, how poorly located it is or how poorly sited or how few um, the connections it has to infrastructure. I think that's um, so it's taking away that's sapping away at the, the city a little bit. So um, no, I, I you know I would say everything I've heard sounds uh, terrific. These ideas are that you've come up with are very similar to the the ones that we're seeing in other cities. Like I don't have a perfect analog to uh, to Athens, but you know, I think Burlington is a is a reasonable, uh, you know, similar in terms of its age and the way it's laid out. So, um, you know, take a look, maybe take a look at those examples if you have a, have a chance, or I'd be happy to to email you a couple links or summaries. Oh, that'd be great. Doing. Really appreciate that because I think they they would be a nice uh, comparator for you as you go through your work. You know, I can, I'm great. sure some of you are aware of them, but um, that's that's what I would. I would suggest is there I think they're on the forefront. I wouldn't agree with every last little thing if I'd done it myself, but um they're they're sort of the, the cutting edge. Great. Okay. So everybody get that? Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you so much. We really appreciate it. Can we um we we meet the third Tuesday at noon um of every month? So 
next month we've got a, a local i won't say developer but some a housing guy so we're hoping maybe after that uh, as we get some ideas and read up on some of these things we can have more specific questions and get more specific guide guidance if you're available would that be okay uh, i would be uh, be delighted yep thank you so much i really appreciate it charles and you too josh thanks so much take care and thank thanks you. for your time all right thank, thank you. you all and, and good luck with the um planning going ahead and okay we'll be in uh, touch and yeah if you could send us those links that'd be wonderful thank you absolutely we will do okay okay thank take you care. thanks everybody Thanks. Bye-bye. Yeah, yeah. I need to. Bye-bye.